saluto and welcome to Esperanto 101 lesson 5. Now today the schedule says we'll be learning more vocabulary. I'm going to be really honest with you right now. No matter how much Esperanto I teach you, you will spend the next few months looking in the dictionaries, probably on Lernu if you're like me, just embarrassingly often for an embarrassingly long time. And like it's going to feel like you have to look up every other word, and that's because I've only taught you 50% of the words you'll use regularly. I don't know what the other words are. I don't know how often you talk about walking versus talking about food, but no matter what, you're going to be looking up words in dictionaries a lot over the course of your Esperanto experience. All of us have done it. Every last one of us. There is no shame in that. I know people who have known the language for years that still need to look it up. So, what we're going to do today is, I'm going to go over some words that maybe don't translate exactly, or if they do have an exact translation, that are structured a little bit differently in Esperanto than they are in English. And hopefully that'll help you when you get to the words that just don't make sense when you look them up in the dictionary. So, I'm just going to do vocabulary, starting with ankal. Ankal means also. But the thing is, you might remember, Esperanto has a really flexible word order. And so, if you're saying, I do this also, how are you going to make it clear that you're doing this as well? or that you're also doing this, or that you also are doing this. And the way Esperanto fixes that is you put ankal immediately before the word that you're, that it's uh, connected to. So if I'm saying I also do this, like me too, I would say ankal me. If I'm saying, I also do this, then I would say, me ankal faras tion. If I'm saying, I also do this, then I'd say, me faras ankal tion chi. And that's how you make it clear exactly what it is you mean. Ankal, or also, goes immediately before the word it's connected to. Char is because. Now, with both of these words, you might notice that they don't end with the regular part of speech uh, endings. They don't have an O or an A or an E or any of that. And people who understand grammar better than me could probably explain this to you a little bit better. If you're really feeling like a trip, you can look up the POMEG, P-M-E-G, which is the Plena Man Libro de Esperanta Gramatico, the full handbook of Esperanto grammar written in Esperanto. So it'll be a little bit overwhelming, but very thorough. Meanwhile, I can just tell you, these words don't have part of speech endings. This is because, char. Now, yen is easily one of my favorite words in Esperanto, just because we really need a word like yen in English. There's, there's no direct translation. The way I've described it to others before is, Basically, it's the verbal equivalent of pointing at something. It's yen! For example, if I am walking
walking into my home and introducing a new person to it. I could say, Yen mi adomo. Uh, it, for those of you who uh, are religious, the Bible and certainly many other religious documents use, uh, translate similar words from languages such as Hebrew as behold. So it would be like, behold my house, but in a much more common everyday speech sort of way. Uh, when I walk up to a group of Esperantists, who know me and who are already sitting down together. Oftentimes, one of them will spot me and say, Yen, she ven us! Which is like, hey look, she's coming! So, Yen can be used like that. It's something like, look it! Or, here is such and such, or so and so. Next we have, ke. Ke is the word that. It is not the word that as in look at that. Uh, it is not a pronoun. It is not an adjective. Ke is a conjunction. It is used to join two clauses, two separate phrases together. So, uh, if you're saying, I can't think of a good example right now, of course, but que is used in between two pieces of a sentence. A clause is a piece of a sentence. There can be uh, an independent clause, which could be a sentence by itself if it wanted to, or a dependent clause, which really needs something else to be part of a sentence uh, with it. And ke is a, the word that when it's joining two parts of a sentence. Like, um, a way it would be used in Esperanto is if I'm saying, uh, I want for us to go somewhere. Uh, then I want that we go and I can't say mi volas ni iras because then it becomes really unclear whether I'm the one wanting or the one going and which one is ni connected to. So you would say, mi volas ke ni iru. Mi volas ke ni iru. Uh, I believe officially there is supposed to be a comma before the word ke whenever it's used. So the sentence I just gave you would be, I want that we go. I want that let's go. Which I would translate into English to make it make a little more sense in English as I want us to go. Then we have pli. Pli means more, uh, as in a quantity. Plu is translated often as further. Uh, not necessarily just in terms of distance, but I mean, not in terms of just physical distance, but also time. Um, you can say, mi volas pli da tempo. I want more time. Or, mi volas vidi vin plu. I want to see you further, longer. Uh, tro is another word that gave me a little bit of trouble when I was first learning. It's too, T-O-O, -O, as in too much or too little, but not as in also. Uh, ankau means 
also. Tro is too, as in too much, too little. Uh, if someone is too loud, they are tro lauta. Next, we have all. All is to or toward. I'm going to pause right here and say that all of the words I'll be going through for the rest of this are prepositions. And the reason I am going through so many prepositions is because prepositions, in my opinion, are really hard to learn in another language. Because you never have a one-to-one -one correlation. Like, if I'm saying to go or to be, those are going to be a pretty much one-to-one -one correlation in a lot of languages. Not all of them, but a lot. If I say, I am going and doing something, then I can translate that pretty literally in any language. And the word go in English will almost always be translated by the same word. But to and toward are the same word in Esperanto. Al. Uh, if I'm going to something or I'm going toward something. And the difference can sometimes just be whether or not it has that accusative N at the end of it. Uh, like we talked about during lesson one, you can use, uh, use words directionally and add the N, the accusative case, at the end of it. Like, I'm going right, I'm going dextra in, which is an adverb that's in the accusative. And the same thing can happen after all. You can use that with or without the accusative case on the next word. Anstatau is instead of. So, mi volas tion anstatau ci tion. I want that instead of this. Antau. Antau is before or in front of. And it's very easy to get Antau and Ankau confused because they sound a lot alike and look a lot alike, but they have very different meanings. Antau is before or in front of. You can also add mal to the beginning of it and make it malantau, which is after or behind. And I'll have a visual of that one later when I get to it in the alphabet. Apud means beside. So right now, mi a telefono, or telefono, estas apud me. My phone is beside me. Che is at. That is the simplest definition I could give for it, but oftentimes you might say that in English you would say, for example, this school is in that city. Uh, the University of Oklahoma is in Norman, Oklahoma, I think. But in Esperanto, you would say it is at Norman, Oklahoma. Che. You can also use it in the same way that you would use the word at in English. Uh, mi estas nun che mi adomo. I am now at my house. Next, chircao. Chircao is around. Uh, not necessarily, like, completely surrounding, but around. It can 
also be surrounding. So, uh, if there is grass, shirkal mia domo, then there is grass around my house. Next is da. Now, I'm going to do two at once here, da and de. Alphabetical order. Da and de. Now, both of these translate to of in English, but da is of when it refers to quantity. Earlier, I said that you might want pli da tempo. You want more of time. But what you're asking for is a quantity. In this case, the quantity is more. So it's more of. Uh, another way da is common used, other than saying that you want pli da ion, more of something, is to say multe da something which is many of something. Uh, so the, the abbreviation I've seen used in Esperanto most commonly instead of LOL, laugh out loud, is MDR, multe da ridoi, where ridoi is, are laughs. So many laughs, multe da ridoi. Technically, it's many of laughs because you're saying you want, you have many of those. De is of in almost every other sense. Now, that distinction can be a difficult one for English speakers because it's one we're not used to making yet, but trust me, you can get used to it. And once you are, it makes more sense once you're used to it. Next, doom. The simplest way I could explain doom is while. Uh, so right now I am holding a card, doom mi parolas al vi. I'm holding a card while I talk to you. Next, Exter. Exter is outside. Estas maluma exter mia domo. It is dark outside my house. Uh, exter can also, and by the way, so can antal. Both of these can become uh, adverbs. So if you're doing, if you did something before, you did it on If you did it, if you did this before that, vi faris tion chi antau tion. But if you just did that before, then vi faris tion antaue, where antau is describing, or antau is describing how you did it. And similarly, uh, stari is to stand. So you could say that she staris extere, she stood outside. If you wanted to specify outside of what, you could say, she staris exter shia domo, sia domo. She stood outside her house. So hopefully those examples clear that up a little bit. Next is L. This is one we don't have in English. It means out of, specifically out of, like from, sort of. So, uh, you might, if you go to the Facebook Esperanto page, you might see people saying 
Saluton el Italio, Italio, which is greetings from or from out of uh, Italy in that case. Uh, you could also say, if you were saying she came from or she came out of, you would probably say L. But if you're saying she is from the United States, she estas de Usono. She is from the United States is she is of the United States. Kind of like in names in foreign languages, they'll have the word de in there saying where that person's from. It's the same thing. El is more of an out of than saying where you were born. Like, if my cat came out of the box, Givenis el lascatolo. N is either in or into. The difference is whether the word following it uh, is in the accusative case. So if she is in the house, then she estas en la domo. If she went into the house, she iris en la domon. You'll notice the only real difference there is that in one of them it's showing direction. But either way it is en. Gis we have already talked about last week. It is until. As in until later. Gis. Inter is between or among. So, for example, uh, the most common place you'll see inter is when someone's talking about la interreto. Uh, I-N-T-E-R-R-E-T-O. All as one word, which is the internet. Literally, the internet which I suppose literally would mean the in-between net, which makes sense. Now, if you are like I was when I was first learning, ye yeah will be your favorite preposition because it doesn't mean anything in particular. Ye yeah is an undefined preposition that was specifically made for when you have no idea what prepos what preposition you need to use here. So, if you're trying to say that something happens at 1, like at 1 o'clock, then you don't really mean like physically at in the way that che means physically at this place. You're not physically at the time. It's ye la unua horo, at the first hour. Ye is any time you don't know what preposition to use. And one of the wonderful things about Esperanto is if you're really not sure what preposition to use there and so you just say ye, but it turns out there was a preposition that should have been used there, then someone can very easily understand you and say, ah, vi intensis diri, which is to say, you meant to say, whatever this is, contrao is against. Ah, if something is against the law, it is contrao la legge. Rom is one we don't have in English again. It's something like apart from or except. For example, uh, Chrome 
tiu mi ne havas gefratoin. Apart from that one, I don't have brothers or sisters. Um, you, it's basically just that. It's apart from. Uh, it is sometimes used in the sense of except, which is more or less the same thing. Except him, I don't have any of this. Then we have kun. Kun means with. You can use it in just about every sense that you would use the English word with. So that's a nice one. Lao is a fun one. It means according to or along the lines of. For example, one of the most common ways you'll see Lao used is Lao mia opinio, in my opinion, which is to say according to or along the lines of my opinion. Then we have malantau, like I talked about. It's antau before, except mal, the opposite. So the opposite of before is after or behind. Specifically, malanto is behind, and after is going to be post. Anto can be in the sense of before time-wise or before in front of, like she is standing before me. Malanto is specifically location, behind. Post is the word for after. Now, another tricky one, malgrau. Malgrau is in spite of. So, malgrau ke she ne studis multon. In spite of that she didn't study much, or despite the fact that she didn't study much. She faris bone. She did well. Per is by means of. Ah, uh, it is more or less equivalent to the Latin word via. But try hard not to get the two of them confused because via in Esperanto means your. So per is by means of. Ah. Uh, uh, one way it can be used is if you do something per forte, then you're doing it by strength. Forto is strength. So per forte is by strength or by force, like you're forcing something. And per forti, as an aside, is usually referring to forcing yourself onto someone else in a rather physical way. Po is at the rate of. Uh, so if you're doing something, you make them at the rate of one per hour, then Vifaris ilin po unu en horo. At the rate of one in an hour. Por means for. In, in most of the senses that English would have it. If you happen to know Spanish, por is confusingly more similar to the Spanish word para in meaning. Post, we already discussed, is after in the sense of time. So post chitiu leziono, after this lesson, you will know more about Esperanto.
right there is beyond. It's not just after or past, it's beyond. Pre is about in the sense of regarding. If you talk about something, vi parolas pri io. You will notice that there is not an accusative after that. Something isn't a direct object because there's a preposition in the way. So, you, vi parolas pri io. And that pre, that about or regarding, keeps io from needing to be accusative. Because it, it explains that this is about that. And io can't possibly be understood as being the thing that's talking, something talking. Uh, because then what's the pre there for? Pro is on account of or because of. So if you're doing something because of love, because you love someone so much, then vi faras gin pro amo. Sen is without. That one is pretty simple. Sen without. Sub is under. So if something is underground, G estas sub la terra, under the earth. If you are burying something, you could be said to be sub terriganta, Jean could be said that the subterigas gene. You are causing it to be underground. Super is above. Now, I'm going to differentiate here. Super is above. Sur is on. So, if something is above the ground, that is not necessarily the same as it being sur, on the ground. If it's super latero, then it's probably kind of floating. If it's sur latero, then it is solidly on top of the ground. Tra is through. Trans is across. This is an important distinction because if you are going trans la maro, if you are going a across the sea, that is not necessarily the same thing as going tra la terra, through the sea. So that is an important thing to uh, be careful of. Now, I'm going to go through a few other words, one of them in particular, dev. It's usually a verb, so devi. Ah, uh, I could not, to save me, tell you how to translate devi into English, but I can say that if me devas fari ion, then I must do it. It's should or ought or must. And it will basically never be on its own. Devas will almost, or Devi will almost always be, first of all, it will rarely be Devi. And uh, it will almost always have another infinitive verb after it. Mi devas fari. Mi devas legi. I must read. Mi devas iri. I must go. I should go. Uh, as a noun, it is 
duty. Devo. It is, uh, it's a must. Uh, and that is really most of, sorry, I'm searching through my cards here. But really, that's going to be most of the words that are actually difficult. Past that, anything you need to know in Esperanto, look it up on Lernu. There's a lovely little dictionary on the side of the page there, and you can look up most words. And my favorite thing about the dictionary on Lernu is that it'll break it down for you if you are by some wondrous uh, decision reading a book in Esperanto and I'm going to let you know the first book I read in Esperanto I had known the language for a year I could have full conversations out loud face to face without ever once needing a dictionary and I cracked open a book and I looked up 50 words probably in the first chapter to be fair, many of them were the same word over and over, because when you're talking to people online, you don't need to say walk a whole lot. And you certainly don't talk much, of, well, I certainly don't talk much about recipes and the like. So a lot of words you need, you're going to need to look up, because how could I know what you'll need to say? How could you know right now what you'll need to say in conversations later? The number one thing I can suggest is practice, practice, practice. Uh, if you have a Facebook account, like the Esperanto pages on Facebook, change your Facebook into Esperanto. You already know what where the like button is and where the share button is. All it's going to do is give you a different word for it and then you get to look up that word and all of a sudden you know really really well what shati means like and that's how you learn I'm hoping that explaining some of the more confusing words here has helped if you're still a little bit confused about them please send me a message I would love that and in the meantime, I wish you all the best. And again, any questions or comments, as always, drop me a message and I will help you out in any way I can. Thank you so much for being a part of my class so far.